Delegate from Virginia Beach, Delegate Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal pro uh, privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, it would appear that those in the party across the aisle have learned nothing from November, not the first thing. Having watched this ongoing dispute over masking in schools, that's the only conclusion that I can reach. Time and time again, we see the other party arguing that the governor has no authority to end the mask mandate in our schools, despite the plain language of the Code of Virginia, which puts parents in charge of their children's well-being. Some have even gone further, Mr. Speaker. Some members of the other body that didn't face the voters this year have attacked parental rights in recent days, specifically Title I, Section 240.1 of the Virginia Code. Let's take a second and look closely at this section. It reads, a parent has a fundamental right to make decisions concerning the upbringing, education, and care of the parent's child. Mr. Speaker, that's a powerful statement. It writes into our code what Virginia law, English common law, and indeed most of Western civilization has held for centuries. When it comes to children, parents are in charge. When the governor issued his executive order, he relied on this language of the code. Parents, not bureaucrats, not elected officials, are the proper decision makers for whether their children should wear masks in schools or not. Members of the other party and some in the other body don't agree with that code section. One member of the other body said on social media, and I quote, this is an act of assembly from 2013 that the governor and attorney general are using to mask mandate in, or remove the mask mandate in school, but there is one little problem. Check out section two. That court case is about sperm donor rights. It appears they never actually read the law they're using, end of quote. Mr. Speaker, the act of writing chapter 668 in the code did indeed codify a holding of the Supreme Court. It writes into law the holding of the Supreme Court in Virginia in the case of Ella v. Bright from 2013. Members of the other party have mocked that case as dealing with rights of a sperm donor. Had the interns running those social media accounts done a little bit more reading, Mr. Speaker, they would have learned that the holding of the case is a bit more fundamental than that. Quoting from the unanimous holding of the court, the relationship between a parent and child is a constitutionally protected liberty interest under the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Indeed, the Supreme Court of the United States has characterized a parent's right to raise his or her child as perhaps the oldest of the fundamental liberty interests recognized by this court. Any statute that seeks to interfere with a parent's fundamental rights survives constitutional scrutiny only if it's narrowly tailored to serve a compelling state interest. End of quotes. Parents, you are in charge. Your children do not belong to the state. They are not the property of your community. Children are individuals whose parents are charged by God and the Commonwealth with their care and nurturing for 18 years. We just had an election about this, Mr. Speaker, and the side that backed the parents won. And the side that said, I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach, lost. Let us be clear, any student who wants to wear a mask under the governor's executive order may do so. There is no, there is no ban on masks. Parents, your governor respects your rights as parents. Your lieutenant governor respects your rights as parents. And your attorney general respects your rights as parents. And the majority party in this House of Delegates respects your rights as parents. And we will continue to do our utmost to ensure that they are not stepped on by anyone, especially those charged with helping you educate your children. Mr. Speaker, we stand with parents, and we're proud to do so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.